Greetings and salutations to you, noble viewers. Well, this is August the 1st, or it was, depending on when you're watching this, and do you know what that means? No? Well, whether you do or not, it means it's WEGAF Review's 4th Anniversary! <laughs> yes, sir. Four years running now, and every year possible so far, I have celebrated by featuring the continuing adventures of The Flag, star of our very first episode and one of the more over-the-top patriotic superheroes you're ever likely to run across. For those just joining us, a quick primer. The Flag's true identity is Jim Courtney, adopted son of elderly veteran flag maker Old Glory, and the proud possessor of a magical flag birthmark that, when pressed, transforms him into his ungrammatical alter ego, when it's not lighting up like an arcade machine. But we'll get into that later. For now, sit back, drape yourself in primary colors, and view the eternal majesty of the flag! We start off in a small hotel in Washington, D.C., where a suspiciously Nazi-ish looking fellow referred to as Herr Gunn, which may or may not be a pun, I'm not sure, is going over his nefarious plans with his nefarious underlings. Our older gold star mothers arrived for their convention, and are you sure that none of them suspect the reason that they were offered free accommodations at this hotel? No, mine leader. None of the old fools suspect that this hotel is owned and operated by Heinrich Gunn, leader of the first Nazi American society, and that we have special plans for them. Then proceed with their plans and let me know when everything is set for our visit to their president. I will do that, Herr Gunn. Good! Oh, one last thing. Do you think we has exposited enough information to their little boys and girlies that is reading this gunk? I believe we have met our quota, Herr Gunn. Wunderbar. Leave me now while I eat this large pretzel and ponder at how evil I am, as I do every day at five o'clock. In another room of the same hotel are Old Glory and Jim. How does it feel, Old Glory, to be commissioned by the Gold Star Mothers of America to make a special flag for them and present it personally at their convention this afternoon? How does it feel, Old Glory, to have done something off-panel solely so that I can ask you about it, despite the fact that we both know about it? I'm mighty proud, son. I guess you are. In the private dining room of the hotel a few minutes later... I am proud to announce that the president himself will give us a special audience this afternoon, and... As the speaker continues, unnoticed by the happy Gold Star Mothers, odorless, almost invisible fumes pour from the ventilators of the room. Said fumes quickly knock out everyone present, and they get bound and gagged off-panel. Then, a bit later, we cut to the White House in the next stage of Gum's fiendish plan, which is... Hmm? It's a man in women's clothes! Look out, Mr. President! I... What? I, I mean... What? It's official. I'm not dreaming this. Ladies and gentlemen, Gunn's fiendish plan is to invade the White House with transvestite Nazis. Transvestite Nazis. I couldn't make this stuff up if I tried. Anyway, so the... Transvestite Nazis, holy carp, I still can't believe that, infiltrate the building and more or less slaughter everyone. I have two... no. I have a multitude of questions, but let's start with two. First off, why exactly did Gunn need the Gold Star Mothers for this little operation? I mean, I get that his men only got into the White House because everyone thought they were nice little old ladies, but if all you had to do to achieve that effect was to have them expect nice little old ladies and then dress up as them, then why did you need the nice little old ladies in the first place? Just make up a fake organization, hire someone's grandma to act as frontman for a bit, then get the invite and break out the crinoline. There's no point in roping these gold star mothers into this if all you need to pull it off is some dresses. Unless they took those from... <gasps> oh no. Oh no. Oh, gods above me, please, please, please don't have this comic cut back. 
back to a room full of little old ladies stripped to their undies. Ah! Ah! <laughs> anyway, question number two would be, what the heck kind of security does the White House have here? And I won't go any further with that one because I'd say it speaks for itself. Really, I can't be the only one who finds this whole thing just a wee bit silly, because most of the next page is taken up with Gunn's reactions to it. First, he gets mad at one of his henchmen for making a joke about it. Second, he blows said henchman's brains out in reaction to same. And third, he orders the rest of his men to get rid of the stupid frilly dresses already. And I hope they brought a change of clothes with them, because as hard a time my brain is having with wrapping itself around the notion of transvestite Nazis, it actively shrinks in terror for the prospect of nude Nazis. I have misplaced my pants. Yeah, picture that, only without the grocery bag, and in place of Homer, you have Nazis. It's not a pretty picture, is it? Before... All that, though, Gunn declares himself president and passes up the chance to off FDR, instead merely sleep-gassing him and tossing him in the closet because we might need him for something later. Like what? I thought you were the president now. Do you want him to make you waffles? <laughs> While all this is going on, however, Old Glory and Jim have, all oblivious, been taking a sightseeing tour in a taxi. And they're in the middle of doing this when, all of a sudden, Old Glory! I've got the strangest feeling that some woman is calling me for help! Is my birthmark glowing? It is, son. Someone's in serious trouble. Yep, there's the lighting up like an arcade machine business I mentioned earlier. I had a whole rant about it in the last The Flag video, so go check that out if you want. I'll wait. So rather than simply get out and, I don't know, find a phone booth or something, Jim simply makes a lightning change into the flag right then and there, and then dashes away, leaving the poor cabbie to question his mental stability. Hey, he's the defender of the nation itself. He could care less about its individual inhabitants. Anyway, now that he's donned the appropriate raiment, the flag follows his flag button's directions and heads back to the hotel. Where, of course, it leads him straight to the dining room, where the poor Gold Star mothers are still tied up. Evidently, one of them has been giving a little whistle, for, as all of you who have been following along at home should know, that is the only way of summoning the flag. It's the flag! I knew if I shouted for him, prayed for him for long enough, he would come! What?! Okay, look, I know I spend far too much time screaming in these reviews, and I really ought to tone that down. If nothing else, it's bad for the larynx. But when a comic smacks you upside the head the way this one just did, what else am I supposed to do? How did said smacking occur, you ask? Well, if you followed my earlier advice and watched the previous entry in The Flag's Adventures, you'll know that that story was very specific about how exactly you summon him. You whistle the star-spangled banner while the passionate flame of patriotism burns in your heart. Short of calling him on the The Flag phone, if he has one, and I wouldn't be surprised, that is the only known way to make his birthmark go blinky blinky. And now you're telling me that someone can just open their pie hole and holler and that'll make it light up like a Christmas tree? What else will do the trick? Drum solos? Bubble wrap? Nostrils squeaking? Kittens mewing? Cockroaches during the can-can on a piece of aluminum foil? I don't know. They might. Stick to freaking guidelines. Well, one way or another, the flag has been summoned by one of the mothers, who are not stripped to their undies, thank goodness, which means it's time for him to prod some bad guy posterior and then let them loose. And that's exactly what he does, but not before one of the bellhops who are guarding them has secretly summoned reinforcements. And when they arrive, that's when things start getting interesting. Uh, more interesting. I will freely concede that transvestite Nazis taking over the White House is already plenty interesting. That scar! Oh, I know him anywhere! Ralph! My son, Ralph! Ralph, boy, don't you know your mother? I'm your ma, Ralph! I'm Elsie Smith, and you're Ralph Smith! Something tells me his name is Ralph. Nuts, lady. My name's Schmidt. Roll Schmidt. I ain't never seen you before. 
I shall dub him Rauf. Elsie is not going to be shaken off so easily, though, as she insists that her son, who was a soldier back in the last war, has had that cheek scar since he was a baby, and there's no mistaking him for anyone else. Rauf insists that he's German and tells her to get lost, and when he follows that up by smacking her around, that gets the flag's dander up something fierce. This is his comic gold, dang it! Who does the beating up around air? Lucky for that poor woman you aren't her son, a snake like you! There's going to be a discovery sometime soon! So while Rolf is getting his jaw tickled, his fellow baddies have tried the usual trick of filling our hero full of holes. And once they've discovered that that doesn't work, they sensibly make a run for it. The flag, of course, catches up with them in no time flat and proceeds to soften them up a bit by teaching them what being a propeller feels like. Dizzy and sick, the spies tell of Gum's plans. And, and then he's gonna issue 40 orders from the War Department and take over government control of newspapers and radio so the people won't get any news from abroad. Well, this clearly is not so lovely, so he KOs the remaining crooks and leaves it to Elsie to call the police while he streaks to the White House to stop the evildoers. And not a moment too soon, since Gunn is already putting his plans in motion. You used to be a star impersonator in der beer halls of Berlin, Fritz. Now get to der mics and impersonate der president of der U.S. Hold it. Hold everything. You have a guy who can impersonate the president. Then why do you still need the president? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm encouraging... In president decide, but if I were an evil Nazi out to rule the United States, and I was already pulling off the extremely high-stakes con game that allowed me to do so, and I had an underling that could already do a convincing FDR, then why on earth wouldn't I have killed FDR? This entire house of cards you set up rests on the public believing that he's still in power. All he's got to do is get access to a phone for Five minutes, and everything comes crashing down. It's all so... What is it, ATC? Dum, dum, dum. Dum, dum, dum. Thank you, ATC. When in doubt, you can always count on obscure late 90s Europop groups. Then, perfectly copying the president's voice, Gun's henchman broadcasts on a specially commanded nationwide hookup. My friends, I now bring you the news you have been waiting to hear. Peace has been declared between Germany and England. And so, all defense production will halt. All drafted men will be released from service. There is no longer any need for such preparations, and... Oh, wow. In all seriousness, this is pretty darn cruel. I mean, obviously the writer of this comic couldn't know this at the time, but, as I'm sure most of you are aware, when the war did end, people went crazy for a while. As in cheering crowds, parades, dancing in the streets, the whole deal. Now imagine that happened, and then you found out, no. It was all a lie. One of the biggest wars in history is still going on, and you've got to go through it all again. Honestly, I think in some ways straight-up invasion would be kinder. At least it wouldn't leave people open to that kind of whiplash. In millions of homes, the false speech is received with wild joy. On street corners, in cities and hamlets, in pool rooms, limousines, boarding houses. Everywhere, the false peace announcement creates a sensation for deluded America. <laughs> this is not nice. Imagine it, thinking your son is going to come home safe. Or you, a soldier, are coming back home instead of having to go risk death on a battlefield somewhere, and all to be undone. Oh, God. This army life was swell, but I'll be glad to get back to my folks and my job. Well, up yours too, then. Seriously, here I am, squirming in agonized empathy over what's going to happen, and what does it 
patriotic piece of parboiled pastry have to say for himself? Yeah, home will be nice, but I sure will miss being a soldier. Well, good. I'm glad. You're fine one way or the other, huh? Gosh, kind of takes all the drama out of the situation, now doesn't it? No stakes here. Go to fight and die horribly, live a happy and normal life, all the same to him, as well, it's implied, to all his fellows. Great! Fine! Peachy! Puncture the first slug of a balloon, why don't you? Crying out loud, why do I bother? Though he's not a parboiled piece of pastry, I take that back. It was alliterative. In any case, this grand scale bit of wool pulling over the nation's eyes was, it turns out, purely for the purpose of clearing all the soldiers out of their forts and barracks and things, so that while they were deserted, Gunn's men could move in and lay claim to, as one thug puts it, ALL THAT SWELL EQUIPMENT WAITING RIGHT THERE FOR US TO USE! Concurrent with this, Gunn is giving orders for the same thing to be done with the now-abandoned Navy ships, and, one may surmise, the Air Force's planes, too. I somehow don't think any of that would be quite as easy as portrayed here, but heck with it, they've already successfully conned the entire country, I'll assume they know what they're doing. Meanwhile, we cut back to poor old Elsie, who has gotten Ralph off the hook by telling the cops he was working on the side of the law. While he is grateful to her for this, it doesn't stop him from shoving her out of the way at the nearest opportunity so he can rejoin his nefarious fellows. Ralph! Lady, you can't tell me what to do, not mom! So Rolf rings up Gunn and tells him the flag is coming. Wait, he's still not there yet? This guy can fly fast enough to make the ocean defy the laws of physics, and he still hasn't reached the White House in the... What, at least two days or so it would have taken for the soldiers to start moving out of the camps? They're in the same freaking city! What's going on? All right, all right, there are at least two possibilities. One, the flag felt hungry on the way and stopped to get a hot dog. He liked it so much that he then proceeded to order another 50,000 and spent the next few days scarfing them down and, thanks to his powers, not getting sick. Or two, Washington, D.C. turned into Mega City One while he wasn't looking, pushing the hotel back to somewhere around Boston, it's a Judge Dredd reference, look it up. Which means he's had considerable difficulty just finding the White House again, let alone reaching it. I didn't say either of them made sense. Well, either way, he's reached it now, and naturally the place is swarming with reporters wanting an interview. He tries to tell them what's going on, but they take it for a bunch of insane, paranoid gobbledygook. Which, to be fair, it is. It just happens to be true this time. His next plan, of course, is to drag out a real live Nazi to prove that he's not nuts. But thanks to Rauf, Gunn's men know he's coming, and they're prepared for him. That special high compression bomb will blow him to smithereens! That flag won't wave anymore! BOOM! I'll prove them wrong! I'll wave yet! Hi! Left for dead where he has fallen under shrubbery, the flag lies for two days in a coma, scarcely breathing. Suddenly, a vision appears over his unconscious figure. And holy crud, you guys, it's the patriotic ghost commies that gave him his powers! Continuity! Amazing! This country needs the service of the flag. Arise! Our army and navy are in enemy hands. American guns and equipment are being turned on American men, women, and children. A disaster has struck America. We hereby give you back your life, your strength, and your special powers. Go and destroy the spies and traitors! 
And it looks like that did the trick, since he wakes up feeling fit as a fiddle once more and goes off to save the day. Although, as a random bystander remarks, I fear it is too lit. Because, apparently, two days was all it took for a full-scale invasion to be launched, and towns all over the country are seeing the results. What I'm enjoying about this is that we're using their own weapons to capture these American towns. Yeah, pretty soon we'll have the whole country taken over. Wait a minute. Are those just guns men? Those are just guns men, aren't they? Why? Look, up till now, I haven't had much need to question Gunn's prowess as a tactician. He's actually done a pretty darn good job. But he's not a military leader, he's a... something else. But whatever it is, he's not General Gunn, or Colonel Gunn, or even freaking Captain Gunn. He's just plain old Gunn. He doesn't have an army, he has a bunch of thugs and secret agents. Sure, a lot of them, but numbers alone don't make an army, or else the Boy Scouts would be one, too. So having captured all America's tanks and guns and bombs and ships and planes and things through pure stealth and chicanery, why in the name of delegation doesn't he ring up the War Department back home and say, Come on over, boys! I've got some new toys for you to play with! They do it! You bet they do it! There'd be an actual no foolin' army trampling America under its boots within days. The war would be won for Germany, and all Gunn would have to do is lean back and enjoy the view from the Oval Office. Instead, he puts his own non-army into uniform and lets them go, Wee! We're driving tanks! I mean, it's just... Ugh. ATC? Exactly! Greatest minds of a generation, I'm telling you right now. So naturally, this being America and all, the populace is not about to take this lying down, and a group of them attack. And since these Nazis are not soldiers, GUN! The two sides seem more or less matched. For a moment. Then the guns come out, and, well, it's all sadly predictable, really. Never fear, though, because the flag is here! Yes, he's back in action, and he's going to whoop these Nazis keisters! What inspiring words have you for us, O oh hero of the hour? Come out, come out, wherever you are! Charming. Tossing lead at me, eh? I'll return the compliment with tanks! Don't give up your day job, the flag. Actually, I'm not sure if he has a day job. Unless he helps his dad make flags or something. Which would be weirdly Frankensteinian, since he's the flag, living symbol of America, and he'd be making flags, which are also the symbol of America. So it'd be almost like he was self-cannibalizing to create the things for which he himself was named for, because the flag creates the flags, which in turn inspired the flag, thereby forming an endless loop which STOP THINKING! STOP IT RIGHT NOW! Ugh, sorry. I have problems with sanity sometimes. Anyway, the flag is back in top form once again, and he tenderizes those ne'er-do-wells the way only he can. This is followed by a moment of clarity, however, as he realizes that this is just one little group out of goodness knows how many, and rounding them up the usual way is just a tad too big of a job even for him. Therefore, in the immortal words of Bugs Bunny, It's about time for me to employ a little strategy. First, though, he really ought to do something about that gun character. So he zips off to the White House to put him in his place, and then... Well, it's all over very fast, really. Gunn and his boys get a royal walloping, and when Gunn himself pleads for mercy, he gives it to him by letting Raoulf shoot him down by accident. I would mention, you know, courts and trials and setting an example and, you know, what you're supposed to do, but the flag is the kind of guy who runs what you're supposed to do through the meat grinder every morning and gets red, white, and blue sausage to eat with his eggs. So I'm not going to waste my breath. Any 
further. I thought I took care of you once before, this time I'll make sure! But instead of being knocked out, the scar-faced man undergoes an amazing change! Hey, what is this? What's going on? Where am I? Wow, twice in one episode. That has to be some sort of record. Yep, Elsie was right. Raoul Frilly is her son, and he really has been suffering from amnesia all these years. Naturally, he's somewhat aghast at the news that he's been a bad guy for the past several decades, and a mother slapper around her to boot, and he asks the flag how he can make up for all of that. By helping me! First, help him get the president out of the closet. You're going to tell the rest of this gang that you and I have combined and are taking over, that that was all I was after. You're going to be the boss now that Gunn is dead! And following that, get the president out of the closet! A few days afterward! Dude, seriously, that's FDR in there! Stop futzing about with the Nazis for five minutes and go get the poor man out of the closet! He's been using the cleaning supplies for a pillow for almost a week now! Y yes I meant that sort of a closet. W why? What did you think I meant? Well. Anyway, I'm jumping around a bit. What happens a few days prior to a few days afterwards, right where we just were, in other words, is as follows. And I hereby order all our forces to come to South Plains, Virginia for a giant rally and to meet your new leaders in person. Does this sound familiar? It should. It's almost exactly the same plan the flag carried out with the Invisible American in his very first story. I suppose that counts as continuity of sorts? Or laziness? Or both? I don't know. So having caught up with our jumpy timeline, we have reached a few days afterward, and are now at South Plains, Virginia, where the entirety of what used to be Gunn's men are sieg-heiling the flag and Raoulf like there's no tomorrow. Naturally, though, their bubble is about to be popped. My speech will be brief. You men were brought here because your reign of terror is over. We have tricked you just as you tricked the nation. The new leader is joking. You think so? Then watch this. Save us! We surrender! We surrender! Man, being thousands of armed thugs is easy when you're just one guy who can fly and punch things. Seriously, these guys represent enough combined manpower to conquer the United States of America, and how does the flag beat them? Whoosh! <laughs> Not only are they cowardly, they're stupid, too. Since the flag reveals that they had carelessly tossed aside all their newly acquired tanks and such when they came to this spot in the middle of nowhere en masse without leaving behind so much as a guard detail, with the predictable result that the actual army picked them right back up again and are on the way right now. Gads, I mean, say what you will about the actual Nazis. At least they were organized. These clowns couldn't organize a bake sale. So, all's well that ends well, the country gets back to normal. I guess someone finally freed poor JFK. Raoulf and Elsie are happily reunited, and things wrap up back with the Gold Star Mothers again, who are finally getting to hold their convention, and with Old Glory, who is finally getting to present his special or, in other words, completely normal, flagged them as they cheer him on. You warm the heart of this weary old war veteran, ladies. Old war veteran, eh? From what I heard, you acted like a pretty young sprout when you went to that hotel and cleaned up the joint for the way they treated those women. Oh, pshaw, <clears throat> just gossip. <clears throat> Why, old glory, you rendy old goat. This is America, boy. We don't say Randy here unless we're talking to a man named Randolph. And I am not. Go to your room. We're in a different state from my room. You can fly across country. You'll manage. So, to sum up, considering the fine details of the plans of transvestite Nazis can be most deleterious to the brain, Magic flag buttons are highly inconsistent when it comes to locating those in need. 
Washington, D.C. has obtained the ability to warp space and time, when one has need of and access to a regular army, one should take advantage of said fact, and... Actually, I think that more or less sums it up. Anything to add, ATC, you smart, smart people? I may have made a terrible mistake. Ah, oh, well. Bye!